YouTube and welcome to Flow Shop. This is my YouTube channel and my name is Joseph. Um, basically, the reason why I created this uh, YouTube channel is because I get a lot of questions and um, especially when it comes to my retouching, people want to know how I do certain things that I do. So I created this YouTube channel so that I can be putting um, just short, short versions and, 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 and tricks and tips and things that I have found over the few um, years that I have been shooting and retouching so if you have any suggestion if you have anything that you want to see me do if there is anything that you want me to do in Photoshop you can let me know in the comments down below but first of all you also have to subscribe because I'm gonna be putting videos out here on a weekly basis I've been able to compile quite a number of questions that I get asked normally and uh, very often so I'm gonna be basing the these first videos on on that and I believe I can cover that entire series um, by retouching this image and so I'm going to be putting um, short clips of how I'm going to be retouching this image from start to finish how to be able to um, pull out all of the information from your image um, in camera raw before you start your retouching because that's how I like to do it anytime you shoot an image um, you get uh, it, I mean if you shoot in raw you get the raw file but in this case I am going to be using Photoshop and or if you can see this I mean yes you can see the screen right now and it's open in Lightroom I only use Lightroom to organize my pictures and then I do my editing or retouching um, primarily in Photoshop from start to finish all right so I have uh, quite a number of um, pictures open up in Lightroom right now um, this is from a series that I did some of them have been retouched for example this has been retouched and this is a raw file but I'm gonna be using this particular image um, because I want to show how to um, reframe your image for example the framing in this one um, she's been shifted more to the right than to the left and so um, it doesn't look um, too okay because there should be rather space to the left of hair uh, I mean to the right of you when you're viewing but to the left of her um, as she faces the camera all right so first of all I'm gonna just right click this image and I'm gonna edit in Photoshop um, what it's gonna do is gonna create a TIFF version of the picture and still uh, save it in Lightroom and then on your on your desktop or wherever you have the source images I'm gonna click render using Lightroom and it's gonna create the TIFF file of the image and it's gonna open it up after it's done in Photoshop. As you can see I was already working on an image but then I decided to do the tutorial so yeah okay so um, I can still get the um, camera raw filter by going to filter coming all the way down to camera raw filter and what this is gonna do is it's gonna open um, the image up in. Sorry about my iPhone. I just got a notification, uh, and it's gonna be vibrating. Too bad. Uh, let me just. Okay, yeah. Sorry for the distraction, guys. All right. So right now, uh, it's open up in Camera Raw, and this red area here, which we didn't see in the initial image, is just a, is for the, um, Camera Raw's way of telling me that these highlights have been blown out and you can tell by the, the values over here when I move it down here you can see all of them are 255, 255, 255, 255 red, 255 green, 255 blue meaning it's blown out but when I move it to the side for example um, they're also almost pure white I mean 252, 251, 251 is still close to white but when I move it into the skin you can tell that the values then begin to reduce um, there's a variation there's 159, 113, 102 and when I move into the, into the darker areas, it goes down into 70s and stuff. It means there's a lot of information and these ones um, having been blown out by the, um, by the highlights. But over here, it's all 255 that is being uh, blown out. So how do you then process your raw file and make it ready for retouching in Photoshop? All right, this is my way. If you have any better way of doing this, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. All right, so first of all, um, if we're talking about exposures and how bright the entire image is, your first point is going to be to pull down the exposure and then you're done. But I don't like to do it that way. 
I rather like to use the sliders and then use exposure as my very last resort. So what I'm going to do first of all is just to increase my contrast just a little bit. Uh, usually I find that if I try and stay between 0 and 10 in the exposure contrast area, um, it makes the image look a little bit more natural in my opinion. And when I hit P to take me back to the um, to how it was when I imported it, you can tell that reds are quite a lot and when I hit P again, um, it has increased and that's because I've increased the contrast. But I'm going to come down to my highlights and I'm going to pull down my highlights like all the way down to about here. And when I hit P again, I can see my before and then my after, before and after. You can tell I'm bringing down um, the highlights in the image and it's, it's making the image pop a little bit more. I'm going to go into the shadows and I'm just going to darken them down as well just a little bit. I'm going to hit P again for preview to see how the image was before my um, edit and how it is currently. So this is how it was, and this is how it is, this is how it was, and this is how it is. Okay, when I hover the mouse over there, it's gone down into the 20s, and I really don't like it when the darks are quite as dark as that. So I'm going to go back into my um, shadows again, and you can see it's minus 13. I'm just going to bring it up a bit to about minus 9, and that should be just about okay. Um, I'm going to increase my clarity to just a little bit. And I'm going to go into my white and just, oops, sorry, uh, the Wacom tablet just, <laughs> I'm just pulling down the shadows. I'm taking it back to minus nine again. Okay, I'm just going to pull down the whites also just a little bit. And I'm going to hit P again for before and after, before and after. And I, I think I kind of like... Um, where this image is, it's been able to bring out a little more information and so I think it's a cool um, base for me to start my retouching with but I'm just going to bring down my highlights just a little bit to like 0 0.05 do a preview and I th yeah I think I like it so we can start with our retouching but then again this tutorial, this first tutorial is just going to teach us how to process our images our raw files in camera raw and make them ready for retouching in Photoshop. So when I'm done with this, again, I'm going to go into my HSL tab and I'm going to play um, with the luminance, with the saturation and with the hue values just a little bit. So I'm going to start off with my saturation and I can tell that there are a lot of reds and yellows and orange in the skin but I don't want to move those like this individually. So I'm going to move up here and come to my target adjustment tool. I'm going to place it around here, thereabouts, and the saturation, I'm just going to bump it up just a little bit. And I need to make sure that I also stay between zero and 10 on the positive side or on the negative side. I'm going to hit P again, and the adjustment is just a little, it's almost, um, it's almost unnoticeable. Um, it's almost as if I had I haven't made any change but when I hit P again you can see it's a little bit um, less saturated and yeah now it's a little bit saturated as well I'm gonna go into my luminance and with the same target adjustment tool again I'm just gonna bump it up just a little bit so I'm gonna hit preview and um, this is how it was before the adjustments I made and this how it is now. It's just adding a little bit of highlights, a little bit of, it's increased the luminance value in the image just a little bit. I'm not gonna play with the hue in this case um, because I think I like the way the image is right now. And yeah, I'm just gonna hit okay and it's gonna save these settings and then bring it back into this image. So that's it guys. This is how um, I like to process my, my images in Camera Raw and prepare it for Photoshop. But um, before I start retouching, I want to free compose the way the images. I know I said it's just about processing in Camera Raw, but the crop is just bugging me right now. So I'm just gonna fix that right now. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna start um, with 
um, my retouching workflow. So I'm just going to hit C for the crop tool. I'm going to move the crop from the side in just to about the bottom of where her shoulder ends. And I'm just going to move the side rather out just a bit. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm not too scared about adding um, more background because I mean, this is not a very complex background. It's just a plain white background. And so adding up the information over there is going to be quite easy. So I'm just going to create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon down here. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool and I'm going to make it bigger. I also know I don't need to do a lot of blending, but just to be on the safer side, I'm going to soften my brush just a bit. I'm using a Wacom tablet and so using Control and Alt on the Mac, I'm able to um, make my brush harder by moving up, um, I mean softer by moving up, make it harder by dragging down. And I can also resize by dragging to the left and dragging to the right. So I'm just, I'm just going to have an average size brush and just a soft edge to be able to blend it in. I'm going to sample the color from here, making sure my flow is at 100, opacity at 100, and I'm going to paint in this way. I'm going to sample around here. I'm going to paint in this way, sample here, paint in, sample there, paint in as well, sample here, paint in, sample here, paint in, sample there, paint in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the side because I need to be quite careful here. I'm going to hit B again for the brush tool. I'm going to sample around here. And I'm going to paint, sample, paint, sample, paint, sample. I'm going to paint down here, um, but I'm going to fix this area in just a bit. Okay. So zooming out, um, you can tell I've been able to seamlessly fill in that side of the end. It's on a completely new layer. I can always um, reveal or hide, or hide it. Yeah. So I'm going to zoom in. And this side is slightly out of focus. And so I'm not really going to pay a lot of attention to um, making sure I'm, I'm going to draw the sleeve in and all that. I'm just going to extend the sleeve just a little bit. So the same way with the brush tool again. I'm going to increase my flow just a little bit, sample the color, and then just paint it in. I want to extend the sleeve so it doesn't bend too short. I'm going to blend some of these areas in just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to sample the dark color, make my brush smaller, reduce my flow just a, a notch, and I'm going to sample the dark color, and then just edge it just a little bit. It was applying too much paint, so I'm reducing my flow, maybe bring down my opacity just a little bit, sample on the dark color, and then just try and blend it in. So I'm going to paint this all the way to the edge, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and now I'm going to focus on blending this in. I can decide to do it on a new layer, just so if I don't like it, I can always undo. So I'm just going to make this sleeve and background blend. Okay, so the soft brush from the sample, and I'm just gonna paint. Sample here, and then paint. And just so I try to make it as believable as possible. I don't want it to be darker than what's already existing. So I'm gonna go sample just a little too much. Just undo, paint a little over it, just like that. And there you have it. No one can tell that I painted this in when I hide. Um, this is how it was, and this is how it is. And we'll be able to fill in the sleeve, and we'll be able to recompose the image as well. So, thank you very much. I've come to the end of this first tutorial. Um, I'm going to release another one um, next week, and uh, I'm going to show how I prepare my my frequency separation um, layers and how I use that in my retouching. So thank you very much again for watching this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you also want to see me do anything again um, in Photoshop, just leave it in the comments down below and I will definitely 
definitely do that if you also have any suggestions on what i did um, if there's a way to, to make it better also let me know in the comments down below thank you very much and see you next week